man, they're watching the face of that woman, and if they act in an angry way, and they act as if they're going to pounce on them, uh, they begin to tremble. That's why they never have incredible miracles, because they're not incorruptible creatures. But then they looked at Nebuchadnezzar, they said, Nebuchadnezzar, there's somebody higher than the highest. There's somebody greater than the greatest. There is somebody more mighty and powerful than the powerful people of this world. If it is so, go ahead and make your fire. But we will serve the Lord our God. And so Nebuchadnezzar became angry. Normally, sinners are always angry. It's part of the things, part of the property, and part of the nature, and part of the character of a sinner. If you find yourself every time, like Nicodemus, you are angry, you're furious. Why didn't they obey me? Why didn't they do what I said? Why didn't they put me above Christ? Why are they putting God as number one in their lives? And then they don't respect my threat. They get angry. Their anger will soon be over. And so Nebuchadnezzar commanded that they should bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they bound them. And he commanded mighty men, hefty men, great men in his kingdom that they should cast Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire. Those people that cast them into the fire, the flame of the fire came out and burnt them and they died. I'm sorry for your enemies. I'm sorry for your persecutors. I'm sorry for the supporters of Nebuchadnezzar. If they don't repent, well, let them face God. And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they threw them in there, remember, these are incorruptible creatures. Whosoever, anyone in Christ, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Old things are passed away. The old fidgeting and the old fear and the old timidity, everything passed away. And then you become a new incorruptible creature. If you have been saved, if you have been born again during this crusade, here on the grounds and anywhere you may be, that new nature of incorruptibility has now come upon you. You will go and you will stand straight. You will go and you will live straight. You will go and live by holiness and righteousness every day, all the days of your life in Jesus' name. And then God's incredible miracles will always take place in your life. They stood up. After they threw them into the fire and they were walking and they were told, Nebuchadnezzar rose up and he looked, he peeped in. I want to see those men. Israel, Jews will never disobey me anymore in their lives. And then he was surprised. Your enemies will be surprised. Your persecutors will be surprised. You know, there are people, if I give my life to Christ now, I don't know what will happen to me, and I'm afraid what people at home, what people in the village, what people in the cult, what people in the gang, what they will say and what they will do to me, will also become incorruptible, a new creature in Christ. All those people, the Lord will conquer them for you. And Nebuchadnezzar said, come and see. Did we not throw three men into the fire? And behold, I see four men. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. He counted every way, and there were four. And then he said, the appearance of the fourth one is like the Son of God. The Son of God will be with you. The Son of God will never leave you. When you get into trial, when you get into temptation, when you get to a situation where people expect you will compromise, you will not compromise, and the Son of God will be with you, abide with you all the days of your life in Jesus' name. And then 
they were promoted. Your promotion is coming. And Daniel now was another man that had that incorruptible nature, incorruptible character, and they threw him to the lion's den all over the night. The lions honored, respected Daniel. They said, this man is incorruptible, and so he must have incredible miracles, and he did not die in the lion's den. The Lord is still able to do that today. And the power of the Lord will keep you. Persecution will not destroy you. The lies of the devil will not destroy you. And whatever persecutors do, you will stand firm to the edge in Jesus' name. Emma, the manifold miracles. I the incredible miracles are in miracle are in the reverberating miracles for rejoicing captives. Reverberating, that is, you have, it spreads, it spreads to other people, and everybody around you will also taste of that miracle. The miracle you have tonight, miracle of salvation, and the miracle of healing, and the miracle of deliverance and the powerful manifestation of the miracle torch in your life it will not stop at your door if your husband it will get to your wife your wife it will get to your husband your parent it will get to your children your child it will get to your parents it will get to your classmates it will get to your friends it will get everywhere that's the great thing about the miracle of Christ. The miracle we get doesn't stop with us. Reverberating miracles for rejoicing captives. Uh, this story, look at this story now. Acts of the Apostle chapter 16. Uh, I'm reading from verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, and they sang praises unto God. And the prisoners had them. They had been beaten, then they were put in the prison, and their feet were put in the stocks. It's like there was no freedom, and the government of that day said they would teach them and show them something, but they were rejoicing. Cap uh, captured, they were rejoicing. In prison, they were rejoicing. You got the salvation of the Lord, they were rejoicing. You know, when you have the salvation of the Lord, there may be people that will come and they cast you out of their company. They say, it's, it's come born again, born again, born again, people. We have nothing to do with you anymore. You are isolated and you are in prison and you are kept in captivity. And some people that do not know that a miracle is about to happen, reverberating miracles, then they become sorrowful, they're dejected, and they're crying. I didn't know I got saved and now I even made right my life. Everything is okay, but look at what is happening. Nina, when you do that, you are going to miss a miracle, a great miracle that will happen. And then it will be repeated in the lives of other people. But you know what they did in verse 26? After they praised the Lord and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking and immediately the foundations of the prison shaking then immediately now all the doors were open and everyone's bands not only the bands of Paul and the bands of Silas all the other people that were in the prison everyone's bands were Lose. And then the Philippian jailer even came to have salvation. That's the reverberating miracle for rejoicing captives. Always rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. I say unto you, rejoice, and miracles will never stop in your life. The joy of salvation will never stop in your life. The power that revives the body and quickens the body will never stop in your life in Jesus' name. Today, miracle. Tomorrow, miracle. This week, miracle. And this month, miracle. Next month, 
next year as you follow along and you are rejoicing in the Lord all the time, reverberating miracles in your life in Jesus' name. M, manifold miracles. I, incredible miracles. R, reverberating miracles. A, abiding miracles from the anointed Christ. Abiding miracles from the anointed Christ. The miracles Christ gives you will abide. Amen. Miracle of salvation will abide. Of healing will abide. Of deliverance will abide. Of provision will abide. Of power to break every yoke will abide in your life in Jesus' name. Abiding miracles from the anointed Christ. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. That's why we have been having uh, the goodness of the Lord all the days, every day of this crusade. And today, the climax will be the climax of miracle in your life. He went about doing good and healing all, how many people? And healing all, how many people? And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And the devil could not resist and say, uh-uh, I am here. I'm controlling this life. I'm going to ruin this life. I'm going to wreck this life. I'm going to destroy this life. When Christ comes, all those demonic powers, they'll vanish away in your life. Oppression will vanish away. Captivity will vanish away. Sickness will vanish away. Healing all that are oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. There's anointing here tonight, the anointing of Christ, that will break every yoke in your life. Isaiah chapter 10, reading from verse 27, Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, and it shall come to pass in that day. Which day? I say which day? For you, which day? For your family, which day? And it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because 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 of the anointing your yoke is destroyed the curse is taken away from your life. New life has come for you today in Jesus' name. Marvelous miracles, incredible miracles, reverberating miracles, abiding miracles in your life in Jesus' name. Abiding, abiding till the end of the year. The healing you have got here will abide. The deliverance you have got here will abide. And those who have been raised from the dead, that miracle of life, resurrection life, will abide in Jesus' name. And the one you are going to get tonight will abide. Yeah. Number five, see the confirmed miracle by the creative comforter. The Spirit of God by the creative comforter. Actually, we're told in Job chapter 33, verse 4, the Spirit of God has made me, has created me, has given me form, and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. That Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, Christ referred to Him as the comforter. And in your being born again, it's involved. In your sanctification, it's involved. In your power 
of the Holy Ghost, the endowment of power of the Holy Ghost, he is involved. Because when he comes, he will convict the world of sin. And then he will lead you to pray because he is the intercessor. He teaches us to pray. He leads us to pray. He moves us to pray. He inspires us to pray. He stirs us up to pray. And he is the mighty intercessor. And as the creative comforter, he'll give you confirmed miracle. Look at Romans chapter 8. Reading from verse 11 there. In Romans chapter 8 verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Where is the Holy Ghost going to dwell? I said where is the Holy Ghost going to dwell? And it's the spirit of life. Not the spirit of death. It's the spirit of healing. Not the spirit of sickness. It's the spirit of power, not the spirit of weakness. And if that spirit, the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth continually dwelleth all the time that dwelleth in you and so miracles will be confirmed in your life yeah. mark chapter 16 we're looking at verse 20 mark chapter 16 reading from verse 20 and they went forth and preached everywhere like we're doing now the lord walking with them and confirming the word confirming the word every word you have heard from the first day to this final day and what you are hearing right now will be confirmed in your experience confirming the word or signs following and the church the people of god said amen and now l is the last in miracle that means miracles that last miracles that endure miracles that are there now and they'll keep on being there until the final day lasting miracles through the Lord's counsel. Lasting miracles through the Lord's counsel. Look at John. We're looking at John chapter 5. In John chapter 5, uh, this is the man who had been sick for 38 years. New Testament. In John chapter 5, uh, looking at verse 8. And the Lord asked the man, Wilt thou be made whole? And the man said, I don't have anybody when the water is troubled to pick me up and get me into the water. And Jesus said, rise up, take up thy bed and walk. And the Lord is telling you tonight, final day of this crusade, rise up. You are not weak anymore, rise up. You are not impotent anymore, rise up. You are not sick anymore. Rise up. And then in verse 9, we're told in verse 9, and immediately the man was made whole. When are you going to be made whole? Immediately the man was made whole. And he took off his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Now, how will that miracle last? How will that miracle abide and remain until the end of his life? And look at verse 14. In verse 14, after what Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Is the one that has healed. Is the one who has redeemed you. Is the one who has set you free from that sickness. Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. How will your miracle last 
You don't go back to the nightclub, sin no more. Let's say what sin happen or come unto thee. How will your miracle last? You don't go back to idol worship anymore. You don't go back to the a miserable life, sinful life, defiled life you were living before. How will the miracle last? You don't go back to the drunkenness and to the smoking, whether it's ordinary cigarette or marijuana, or it's, uh, you know, a kind of uh, a cigarette that they say it doesn't uh, really have uh, the weed inside. This one is technical. No more smoking and no more drunkenness. And your life comes alive and the grace of God penetrates your life and you keep on living for the glory of God and the goodness of other people and your miracle will last. I said your miracle will last. Sin no more. Lest a worse thing come on thee. The grace to live right. You have it right now. The grace to live above all the sins of the past. You have that now in Jesus' name. First John chapter 5. In First John chapter 5 verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. If you've given your life to the Lord, the past life, defeated life, the past life, the occultic life, the corrupted life, the past life, uh, the sensual life, the adulterous life, and the fornicating life, all that is no more there. Now we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself keepeth himself keepeth himself and that wicked one toucheth him not he will not touch you anymore the spirit of god will surround you and protect you he will not touch you anymore christ will be your shepherd that evil one will not touch you anymore in jesus name verse 21 in verse 21 little children those who are just born again and those who have been born again before keep yourselves from idols we're looking at number seven now e the evident miracles for evangelizing christians as now you come to the lord or you have come to the Lord before, and this same light you have, my little light, I will let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. My new found faith and salvation, I will broadcast it, I'll share it all around. I will let it shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven the beauty of the grace of god is that that grace of god can be seen the beauty of the new life is that that new life can be evident before people the beauty of our connection reconciliation with god is that that new connection and, re and reconciliation with god bears fruit your life will bear fruit you're giving your life to the Lord tonight, your life will bear fruit. The people that got this salvation before us, they didn't uh, hide it, they didn't just stay in a corner, they didn't lock the doors against themselves, they came out, and as they came out, evident miracles, evident miracles. Your miracle of salvation will be evident. Your miracle of healing will be evident. And your miracle of total freedom will be evident in Jesus' name. Evident miracles for evangelizing Christians. Look at Acts chapter 8. We're reading from verse 4. Acts chapter 8, verse 4. It says, Therefore, they that were scattered abroad after the crusade, after they had received the Lord, after the new life had come to them, after their faith had saved them, after they put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and they have the salvation of the Lord, therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. The word is now in your mouth. I said the word is now in your mouth. 
you'll proclaim that word. You'll declare that word. You tell your friends, you tell your neighbors, you tell your co-workers, and when you tell them that there's something evangelism does, when you go back to the office and you tell them, I am born again, and you declare it, they too can be born again. That statement, I am born again, I'm now a child of God, a new life has come to me. It will prevent your old friends from coming to you and wanting to entice you with the old life. Because you've declared to them already, I am born again. And then you yourself will be conscious. I told them, I told my friends, I told my neighbors, I told uh, my co-tenants, I am born again. And they were watching my life. And you will not slip back into evil things. And so, and that new birth, when they see it in your life, and you say, truly, truly, this man has changed. This woman has changed. They will come and ask you, how did it happen? And by the grace of God, you will help them. It will happen in their lives too. Look at verse 5. Here is Philip now. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. That's what you are doing now as we go about anywhere. You'll not allow a day to pass. You must tell other people of the joy of salvation you have. You must tell them of the evidence of the power of eternal life that you have. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. What then happened? Look at verse 6. In verse 6, and the people with one accord gave he to do things which Philip said, which Philip spake. Look up here. I'm your Philip tonight. I said I'm your Philip tonight. I've come to you and I'm declaring to you that you are going to have instantaneous miracle tonight. Your sin will be forgiven. Your life will be set free. Salvation from heaven will come unto you. I am that Philip tonight. I thought your name is William. Yes. My name is William, but I'm doing the work of Philip tonight. For you. I said for you. And as there was joy in Samaria, there's going to be joy in your life. Joy of salvation. Joy of a new life. The word has come. And it says they gave heed to those things which Philip paid. When he told them, here is the gospel, they accepted. When he told them, here is the good news, they accepted. When he told them, Christ will save you now, they accepted. When he told them, raise up your hand, they accepted. When he told them, rise up now and receive Jesus as your personal savior, they accepted. When he told them, bow your head, close your eyes, let us pray, they accepted. Miracle of salvation took place in their lives. And tonight... As I come and tell you, like he told them, that miracle of forgiveness will happen in your life. That miracle of salvation will happen in your life. And all the other miracles will follow, even tonight, all those miracles manifold, all those miracles incredible, all those miracles reverberating, all those miracles abiding, all those miracles uh, uh, confirmed, all those miracles lasting, all those miracles, evident miracles, will happen in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Hearing and seeing the miracles. Hearing and seeing the miracles. You'll hear of miracles tonight from other people. You'll see miracles tonight, even in your body, in Jesus' name. Look at verse 7. It says in verse 7, Unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taking with pulses, it says, and that were lame were healed. The lame will jump for joy tonight. The blind will see with joy tonight. Great miracle. Wonderful miracle, glorious miracle, gracious miracle, merciful miracle, manifold miracle coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. And they that were lame 
were healed. Paralyzed, they were healed. Stroke, they were healed. Arthritis, they were healed. Broken bones, they were healed. Whatever problem in their lives, they were healed. Your time has now come. Look at verse 8. It says in verse 8, and there was great joy in that city. There was great joy in that city. Over here, as we are here tonight, great joy. On that side, great joy. In front of me here, great joy. On that side, great joy. Anyway, you hear the sound of my voice tonight, great joy in your life. As you respond, as you give heed to the words, you have heard miracles, salvation, healing, deliverance and this miracle will spread from you and spread to other people and spread to other people now acts of the apostle chapter 19 acts chapter 19 i'm reading from verse 11 and god wrought special miracles by the hands of paul God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. And tonight, special miracle. Amen. Spectacular miracle. Amen. It will spread everywhere. It will spread to you there. It will spread over there. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, it tells us, So mightily grew the word of God, and prevail. The word of God will grow in your life, in your family, will prevail in your life and family in Jesus' name. Tonight, special night. Are you ready? Tonight is going to be spectacular. Are you ready? Great things you've never felt, you've never seen, you've never tasted will happen. Are you ready? It's about and I is closed. It's bowed, and I is closed. You see the beginning of that mighty thing happening is that they all give heed to what they have heard. And you don't want to leave this place without the joy of salvation, the joy of a new life, the joy of sins forgiven. The joy of life transformed is available for you now. This is the final night. And the Lord wants to put your name among the people that have abandoned sins and have come to the Savior. It won't take time. If you want to have Jesus as your personal Savior now, you'll be hearing every night. But now you're making up your mind. Raise up your hand where you are. And that salvation will come. God bless you there. Thank you very much. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. There's a final night of the crusade. The salvation you have missed. The eternal life you have missed. The forgiveness you have missed. The freedom you have missed. The voice of God from heaven saying... You are now a child of God. You've missed for such a long time, all these many days. Today it comes. Raise up your hand. Lord, I give up my myself unto you. I surrender myself unto you. Without any reservation, I want that miracle of a new life, miracle of salvation. Raise up that hand. Thank you there. God bless you there. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up. Identify yourself. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you there. God bless you there. Thank you very much. You have honored the word of the Lord. And the Lord will honor you with salvation. This is your time. Yes, my friend there. Rise up. You raise up your hand. Rise up. My boy, my daughter there, raise up your hand, stand up. This is salvation. Great, great miracle of eternal life. And as you raise up your hand, please stand up. Friend, you're coming for the first time. Good for you. 
that you came and now you have the offer of the salvation of the Lord. Friend, you have been coming for a long time. But the peace of salvation has not settled in your heart. You are here now. This is good for you. The peace of God. The joy of salvation. The new life is salvation. You raise up your hand and you stand up. And remember, you desire that peace. You desire that forgiveness. You desire that salvation. You desire that new life. You desire to have adoption into the family of God. The desire you have, follow it with appropriate action. And stand up wherever you are, anywhere, far the back, near the front, or in the middle, on the right, on the left. This is the day of your salvation. Just say quietly there, Lord, I thank you. Tell the Lord, Lord, I thank you. You have invited me. You have offered me salvation. You have offered me forgiveness. And Lord, I receive. I give myself unto you. I plead, I pray. I desire Take all my sins away. Thank you, Lord. You cannot fail. You cannot lie. You said, whosoever comes to you, you will in no wise, for no reason, cast out, I come. Thank you, Lord. I believe you have received me. And I believe I've received your salvation. Let the joy of the Lord take over your heart now. And the new life, or the new power and the grace take over your life right now. Father, we well, thank you. Merciful God, loving God, we well, thank you. Gracious God, we well, thank you. All these who have indicated, both here, online, everywhere, in every locality, we're asking, O oh Lord, receive and forgive everyone in Jesus' name. Take the condemnation of their sin away. Take the guilt and the burden of their sins away. Let there be peace in their hearts now, joy in their hearts now, assurance of salvation in their hearts right now. Thank you, Lord, for bringing them to yourself, to your kingdom, to your family, and you have brought them among those who are saved. I pray, Lord, that your spirit will bring a confirmation in every one of their hearts now. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. A good, good, amen. You have just made the most important decision in your life. Please. And you are a very, very important person. Welcome into the fold. I remember the pastor said you are honored. And as honored people, we have some special people that are around you, counselors, follow-up leaders. Wherever location you are, maybe you are joining us through the social media, satellite, there's a link that you can just use to send us very important information about yourself, your name, telephone number, your address, and all the information that you know will be important to us in our effort to get to you and to help you develop more and be established in the kingdom of God. 
Remember what the pastor said, after you have made this decision, you continue with the Lord. You don't go back to your old life anymore. And if you are joining through the radio, there's a telephone number that you can use to send your information and it will get to us. Plus 234-915-444-9263. That number is displayed on the screen right now. Plus 234-915-444-9263. Send us your information and make sure you continue with everything that the Lord has told you from the man of God tonight. There's going to be a rally of Friends of Jesus, Christ Friends Forum. It's going to take place on Sunday, 5th of June, 2022. 5th of June, 2022. The time will be communicated, the time applicable to your own area, your zone, your district, your group, your state, will be communicated to you by the leaders, your local leaders in your area. And for those who are physically present in our various locations, across the world, let's fill in all the information that you're supposed to fill in and hand it, the slips back to our follow-up leaders and our pastors and workers around you. Remember for those of you on radio and television, you need to connect with Christ and that number is on your screen right now. Those on radio, hear the number again, plus 234-915-444-9263. Please stay where you are, don't go anywhere, because tonight is the grand finale, and there will be great miracles that God is going to do for you this evening. Our Father is getting ready to come up. Be expectant. And it is the final night and grand, grand miracle for grand finale for you as you prepare for that powerful prayer Let's rise up in